I appreciate everyone taking the time. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, again, my name is Gage with Connect Lax. I have Chris Spangler on as well. I'm going to spend the first portion of the presentation just walking through the platform. Uh, not as much detail as normal, just hitting on the key activities that players should be keyed in on. And then Chris is going to go through some slides about the recruiting process, um, key steps to take, some kind of high level do's and don'ts from the perspective of uh, the college coach as well. Um, so with that, I'm going to get started. The first and most important part of the platform is obviously researching schools, finding schools that fit you both on and off the field. If I click here to college matches at the top, we have a questionnaire. The key thing to keep in mind is there's, in this case on girls, 863 college programs from WCLA up to D1. That's over 30,000 roster spots. There is definitely a school for you. It's just finding those schools that fit you uh, both on and off the field. This way we have players, you know, not just searching for last year's final four teams, but just trying to tell us high level, do you want a big school, you know, cost, admissions, et cetera. Here we have a text here. Good question, uh, Samantha. If you still have some players that are trying to get in that haven't registered, uh, they should be able to. Uh, I can't exit um, this webinar uh, to invite them. Um, we will be able to get them the recording. And if they were emailed the registration link, uh, they may still be able to go there and, and join after it started. Uh, so here, what I'm going to do is come down and click See My College Matches. Here I'm going to see the schools that fit based on the high-level criteria that I put in. You can filter this further on the left-hand side. So if I come down here, you could do distance from home. If you have your test score or GPA, you could filter by that as well. If I come down, maybe you're interested in business, you could click on that. If it's something more particular like nursing, you could search for that and continue to find down this list of schools. If I come to Harvard, which is the third school down in the list, the first thing we'll notice at the top right is a little match score. So we can see how well we think this school fits you. Um, here, I'm now looking in the back end of a player profile. To navigate to this area, just click to the account dashboard, come down and click on recommendations. And this is where we're gonna curate schools that we think fit you based on your information. So we'll look at your test scores and GPA, majors of interest, are those offered by the school, athletic level, size, cost, distance from home, class size, gender, mix and campus setting. And from there, we'll rank schools on how well we think they fit you based on the information you provide. If you don't see a check mark after one of these items, just click it and I'll take you to the area of your profile to put that in. If I back up to the Harvard profile and just peruse down the page, the first thing you'll see is a student body breakdown, things like student and faculty ratio. We'll see on the left-hand side some match detail, so where that school fits you or not based on uh, your criteria, uh, list of commits. We can also see events listed by the college coaches, such as clinics and prospect days, as well as team videos. And then here we have a virtual tour of the campus. Now, I quickly kind of breezed over the team videos. Those are super important to take a look at when you're reaching out to the college coaches. It's going to help them know that you've done some homework. There's a lot of good things here. We have a senior perspective from a player. Uh, we have a team trip here, locker room tour, just helping the college coach know that you've done some homework on your behalf to find those schools that fit. Obviously, the virtual tours are very important. Um, more and more players are doing that. We can see here it's a beautiful day uh, at Harvard. And the key thing is that's going to let the welcome to Cambridge, Massachusetts. College coach know that you've taken some initiative, uh, you know, done the campus tour. Let them know you feel like you could be really comfortable and happy there. Um, that's a big thing for them to hear that as well as referencing this LinkedIn information we have below, such as where grads live, where they work, what they do. You know, that's going to help de reset college coaches' recruitment of you. So, if you send an email that's more personalized, such as coach, I'm super interested in entrepreneurship. Um, so, see, that's the third most popular thing that grads do. And then reference your highlight video, and I'll show you how we have an unlimited highlight video builder. Um, that's going to make them more active. Look at your video, come see you in person, and ultimately extend an offer because you're more likely uh, to accept. If I come down here, we have some niche grades around student life and professors as well as incoming class information for GPA and test scores. So this is what we're mapping the players against to come up with those match scores that we saw earlier in recommendations. Further down, we have some incoming class data as far as who got in, who didn't, what their GPA and test score was. Key thing to keep in mind, that's for all incoming freshmen, not just student athletes. Here we happen to look at Harvard. You know, Harvard uses academic index because it's Ivy League. 
And the short answer is the class kind of has to average out to a certain level. But the way you want to think about that is, you know, college coaches have kind of explained is credits and debits. You know, if there's a player that has really strong grades and a great fit, they're going to be more interested in going after that player because that's going to keep a spot open for a player that may not be as strong academically. So in every single case throughout the process, grades is what's going to open more doors for you. Here we see majors by popularity, net price by household income. So as a family, how do I bridge from the sticker price here of 74,000? I'm sure some parents' eyes are watering at that number um, to the net price, which is the sticker price less financial aid. And in that case, that's 18,000. So very big difference. We do have that broken out by household income. And we also have a link to the net price calculator here. So any family can put in their FAFSA information and see that for themselves. Um, give me one second. I'm going to see if I can just find the link for Samantha. I wasn't sure she was able to share the link. Oh, you got it? Okay, great. You could just share that onto them. I think they should be able to still join late, um, but we'll make sure that they get the recording uh, regardless. But obviously, you want them to be able to join for the Q&A aspect. Thanks, Samantha. It's just not on Connect Lax. Yes. So they probably didn't get it then as an email. So let me go ahead and see if I can paste it into this. Uh, link. Just give me one second. Okay. Samantha, I know the link's a little bit long. I just pasted it into the uh, chat. So if you can copy that and share it to them, they should be able to join. Thank you. Uh, if I come further down, so we were just talking about financial here, looking at the net price. Just keep in mind, that's a sticker price, less financial aid. So if you think about all the schools out there, oftentimes, you know, some of those uh, more expensive, you know, NESCAC Patriot schools, may end up having a lower net price because of their endowment, for example. Uh, if I come down here, we have some student debt and salary information. Uh, obviously, you know, parents are usually want to make sure they're looking at this information. We can see that grads have about 6,000 student debt on average, uh, up to about 30,000 90th percentile. After a short grace period, after graduating, they start repayment. We can see what that equates to on a monthly basis. And then we can also see how much grads are making um, six years after they graduate, so we get a payback to compare across schools. Here we see social. If you see, like, for example, community service events on here, um, those are things you can reference in reaching out uh, to a college coach. Campus safety information, Carnegie classifications, teams in the conference, as well as similar academic schools as reported uh, by Harvard. So that could be uh, a D3 school like RPI. That could be uh, a D1 school like Duke. And I was waiting for it. It could also be, uh, you know, a school like Emory, if they have like a college club team, et cetera. If I keep coming back up to the top, I'm just going to click here to this back end to re recommendations. So how do you build your target list? You can go through recommendations, have us curate schools for you, or go through college matches in the search that we did earlier. If you see a school you like, just click on that plus sign. I'll go ahead and click it here. That's going to add that to your list of bookmarks. Okay. This list of bookmarks is just visible between you and your club coach, keeping everyone on the same page. For example, if they were to reach out to Amherst on behalf of a goalie and the coach is like, you know what? We have a goalie. We're looking for attack. Well, if you're a attack player and you bookmark that school, that will be visible to the club coach to convey uh, onto that. If you look here, you're going to see we have some tag notes. So what's important about this is if you have any interactions with the college coach, such as going on campus, phone conversation, et cetera, you can put that in here. That's going to log that for your own record, but it's also going to go into the activity feed of your club coach. And a lot of them, they all pretty much get that as a digest into their inbox. So it's just going to keep them updated of, of your activity. So not just showing, you know, that you're putting in the work, which is going to make them more apt to advocate on your behalf, uh, but also letting them know, you know, how all those interactions are going with the colleges. So if they speak with that, they can reference this record. Again, the schools that you bookmark, not visible to the college coaches. Otherwise, the players would bookmark every school. You can tier those one, two, or three uh, based on your level of interest. You'll see the initials here of who added it. 
So for example, this player is Max Bagataway. So we would see MB for Max, DC for a demo coach. Um, if I expand this out, the thing I would notice, you can click on the star. Uh, that'll feature yourself directly to the college. Um, and you can only do that when you have your pro profile complete so they know you have video. The last thing here, you'll see a little message icon if uh, you message that school. So you should be building a list of at least 30 schools, and we'll get into more detail about that, across multiple divisions, so D1, D2, D3, et cetera. You'll see a little trophy icon if the school has an event that they're running. Uh, obviously, with the dead period, which is now extended through April 15th for Division I, uh, a lot of that's been put on hold. If I come down to the bottom, you can download this into a CSV file. So, for example, if you want to you know, have a coach or call with a coach and you want to see you know, the academic ranges for all the schools and your uh, test scores, notes, et cetera, you can do that. If you're going, for example, uh, to a tournament and you want to see if there's any schools that you can visit on the way, you can also see this here on a map. If I go back up to the top, all the schools that you bookmark will go into analysis. That's a deeper dive into the schools. Uh, you'll see, for example, how popular they are, views, messages from recruits. Uh, further to the right, you can also compare, for example, payback, which is a correlation of student debt and salary information. A lot of families, for example, are surprised when they see that, you know, the payback at a private school like Amherst is actually faster than a state school like Binghamton, and obviously a lot faster than the school here in the middle. If, for example, the player is looking for a small class size, you can filter by that. If they have their ACT score, they could come over to the right and say, okay, I got a 29. What am I looking at? Vermont, Bucknell, RPI, et cetera. So now we talked about building your target list, super important step so that you're finding the schools that fit and messaging those schools. You wanna to try to make sure you get some video in your profile um, before, so a highlight video, for example, before you reach out to those college coaches, there may be some film in your video library. This is where you can go in, tag your plays as well as your teammates. We can see we have an assist here by number six, a goal by number two. If you see a play you like, and for example, you could come in here and put in your number, say, oh, I like this play and move that to your highlight video. If I go to the highlight video builder, you have unlimited highlight videos included with your membership. So for example, we have a tutorial here that walks you through step-by-step. Step. First thing will be just setting up your info slides. A lot of the information will pull from your profile for consistency. Um, and once all that's good, you'll advance to the next page. You can always click to the YouTube channel to see examples of completed highlight videos College. and what those look like, okay? And we're doing over about hundred a day, which is awesome. And then you can get those put to YouTube and I'll show you that on the submit tab. Here, you can select a song. We have the rights to all these songs. So you don't have to worry about any ads being shown over your highlight video. That's a common mistake uh, that players make sometimes. And if you have any film that you wanna add to your highlight video that's not already in the video library, you can put that here. That could be an entire high school game. That could be a showcase that you want to on an individual basis. Uh, so again, you can use film from any source to build your highlight video. You don't have to do any editing. We'll do that for you. Um, just go ahead and drag in those raw uh, video files. When I come to clips, here's where, if it's coming from the video library, it'll have that start and end time already added. So you're just gonna click on this icon to move these down. You can shuffle the order, move your best plays to the front. Never assume the college coach is gonna watch your entire highlight video. Um, always move your best plays to the front. The other mistake sometimes players make is they're just waiting to build that perfect highlight video with 25, 30 plays. You don't need to do that. Um, if you have four plays right now that are very strong, go ahead and build that highlight video. It's unlimited, so if you get some new film in a month from now, that's totally fine. You could add three plays on the front, take a play off the back, and continuously uh, improve and optimize that highlight video. Um, but you want to make sure that you're not waiting to build that highlight video or that your 20-second play is just not nearly as strong as your second play, and it's kind of detracting in the eyes of the college coach. Um, move as I said, your best place to the front, so the coach is definitely gonna see those. And also show diversity of your plays. Don't show the same roll dodge over and over from behind the cage. Show yourself right in the clear, ground ball, shooting from space, passing, et cetera. Uh, the other thing I would just say is try to show context in the plays. So instead of maybe a three or four second where it gets a little choppy, try to show a six, seven second play where the coach can see the play develop. So once you have your time codes in here and you've shuffled your clips, you'll go to ISO. And what that's going to do is cut up those clips for you so you can preview them for accuracy. Make sure it's exactly what you're looking for. All right, this looks good. And then what you're going to do is just come to the right-hand side and just put a little bullseye on yourself. So in this case, before the player makes the cut, after she makes the cut, totally up to you. Um, here we can see a play where the cameraman's a little bit behind the action, and it could be a little bit more zoomed in. 
So this is a great candidate for a zoom effect. This is super important to add because this is going to make it easier for the coach to scout and see you because of this area in white where nothing's happening is going to get cut out and it's going to zoom in um, for the coach to better scout your game. Um, so you can apply that to all the plays that you want. So just go ahead and watch these. Put the little bulls on yourself. And what you'll see on the next page is that what was a five second clip will now be six seconds as it pauses for a second, adding that player isolation effect. Okay, as well as the title card here at the bottom. You'll see that this play here on the right hand side is now more zoomed in, making it easier for the coach to scout you. And then if you come to the bottom, just preview the plays, check your slides, and then hit submit. It'll be done in about three or four minutes. You can decide who you want to notify. Most everyone has it posted to YouTube. You can always uh, edit the text or change, uh, delete a YouTube if you want, but that's the most uh, flexible way for the coaches uh, to watch it. A common question we always get is how do I get featured on social media? The way is to build a highlight video on the platform. So all of these highlights that you see here, these are all built from the highlight videos that the players are submitting, taking one of those plays and cutting it up for social media. Okay. If I come back here, the last thing I want to hit on real quick before I pass the baton over to Chris is just messaging college coaches. So when you built that target list, you've got some video in there. When it comes to recruit info, the most important thing I would say is get your unofficial transcript in there, a little bit of academics. That's what the college coaches are looking for. They want to see the difficulty of classes that you're taking. They'll often do what they call recalc your GPA, meaning if you have a 3.7 with a bunch of gym classes, they could recalc that to a 3.0, right? So they want to see the level of difficulty uh, that you're taking. You don't want to push yourself to take classes that you may not get good grades in because they're super difficult. But again, challenging yourself, taking those more difficult classes, uh, the APs, et cetera, that carries weight in the eyes of the college coaches. Uh, when you're ready to message a school, you can come down to bookmarks, or you could always navigate to the school up here in the top. We can go back to Harvard where we were earlier. Click message coach. Very important. You want to make sure you're including these assistant coaches. Those are likely the recruiting coordinators, the ones most apt to check out uh, your highlight video. This is where you could add and copy your club coach. Uh, if you want to save a master draft here so you don't have to type out the same text every time you can, just make sure you don't put the Hey Coach Davis at the beginning and, and send that accidentally. A lot of players will attach a transcript here as a PDF. Again, that can be unofficial. Um, we've had a lot of platform our clubs switch from other platforms, or maybe the player was just messaging you know, on their own beforehand and they want to make sure that they're keeping the club coach in the loop. You can paste that migrate message here. Great feature. Um, and put that there. Here, you can decide if you want to break out your personal information. Most players do that. And then if I come down to the bottom here, we'll show you an email template. So kind of what you could reference when reaching out. Always good to tease out that you have new uh, video and also show why that school uh, is a great fit. Um, we have some coach messaging tips. I would just note messages under 200 words typically get a little bit uh, more clicks. So you don't want to write a novel to the coaches. And then here, the emails are very clean. It looks just like the player sent in Gmail. Very important, it does break your, out your video, so try to get some video in there. Just makes it very easy for the club and the college coach to follow up on your message. But remember, you sending that message, having that message icon uh, next to all the schools in bookmarks. And again, in your bookmarks of 30 schools, you should see that icon, right? And then if you wanna come from here, you can go to that college profile, message the coach. Uh, last thing I just want to mention here, don't message the coach like on a Friday afternoon when you're driving to a tournament um, in the back of a Suburban. They're probably also in transit to the event. Try to message them, you know, midweek on a Wednesday. Message them in October before November events, May before summer events when they're building that list of, of players and teams that they want to see. Uh, if you're going on campus for a clinic and prospect day, always message them ahead of time, introducing yourself so that when you uh, check in and get that pinny, they can put a face to a name. There's at least six times that you should be messaging uh, each year um, before the summer, before the fall, what events you're attending, after the summer, after the fall, if you have an update on grades, and after the spring and fall semester, I'm sorry, after the fall um, and summer, if you have a new highlight video, and then after the spring and fall semester, if you have an update on grades. I know we have a question here from Brian. When a coach replies to you and you reply to them, to all the coaches, uh, yes. So it's built so that it'll only show you kind of one coach here in messages, uh, kind of the lead contact is that the coach can set, which is the primary contact, but it's usually keeping all those club coaches 
uh, sorry, those college coaches in the loop. Sometimes when you go to message college coaches, you'll see that two of the coaches are grayed out. That's an example where maybe the college is using like a W recruits at uh, colgate.edu email so that they would just want one email to manage uh, all those interactions uh, with players. So um, good questions. Any questions on researching schools, building your highlight video, as well as messaging college coaches before uh, I share Chris's presentation. And I'll just wait for a second to see if anyone adds anything. We're going to have time for questions at the end as well. So if you don't, uh, no worries. All right, beautiful. So I'm going to load up Chris's presentation here. So Chris has a really unique perspective being a former D1 college coach, club coach. He actually coached at the pro level with the Denver Outlaws and is also a current high school coach. So he's kind of seen it from a lot of different sides, uh, given a lot of players uh, advice through the process. Uh, he's also worked with different companies that kind of do that advising stuff. And to be candid, you have all the tools here kind of coupled with this guidance to uh, you know, act on and take advantage of all those uh, resources. So uh, with that said, I'm going to pass it over uh, to Chris. And if you want to go ahead and get started. Great, Gage. Can you hear me okay? I can. Perfect. Uh, first of all, thanks for the introduction. And I'm excited to be working with everybody tonight. Um, I do come from a unique background. I've got uh, experience coaching at the University of Denver. They were Division One. I've coached MCLA. And as Gage mentioned, I coached with the uh, Denver Outlaws. Um, a lot of my experience comes from historical information. So I've brought up a, a tale of two players. These are two athletes I've worked with in the past. Uh, and I like using them as my examples because we can learn a lot from both of these athletes. Um, so we have two athletes here. We have Chris, number 18. He was a midfielder and attackman. He played at Heritage High School in Colorado. He was a B and C student. Uh, every once in a while, he gets some A, uh, a grades, but uh, for the most part, pretty solid uh, BNC student. He did have an ACT score of 21, um, and his senior year, he was an all-conference player. On the right-hand side, we have Max, uh, number 13. He was an attackman, lefty, uh, out of Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Not quite as strong academically. He's more of a B-minus, C-plus student, uh, but he did have a surprising higher ACT score than his grades would uh, reflect. Uh, he was a first team all state, both junior and senior year. Now, the difference between these two athletes um, is Chris is more of a. Uh, well, you'll see in a second how the recruiting game plan went. Chris uh, created a list of 24 colleges he was interested in his freshman year. During his high school career, he was more proactive. He emailed and called those coaches. Um, and he actually reached out to everyone on his list, all 24 colleges, and see what the response was. Um, by the time he got to his junior year, he had been on four college visits, two of them in Colorado, and two of those visits were out of state. And by his senior year, he had narrowed his list down to a top five set of schools, and he had applied to all five. Max um, was a talented player. He went to a number of high school recruiting tournaments. Uh, some of the tournaments were in New York, Colorado, and California. Uh, he was a real standout player individually. You can actually some of it, see some of his highlights on some of the uh, uh, different uh, lacrosse platforms. Um, while he was at those tournaments, he met a number of college coaches at those recruiting events. You know, guys, coaches knew to look for him. Uh, hey, where's that number 13 kid? Yeah, uh, you know, they would have him on their top of their list. Um, he would introduce himself, but he had very little follow up. Uh, during his high school career, he worked with a high school uh, strength and conditioning coach. And so he was just a really dedicated player. But I would say the two differences, Chris was more um, proactive in reaching out to colleges and you know, making that, taking that first step to make that connection with a coach. Max was focusing his athletic, uh, focusing on his athletic abilities and, and really putting a lot of time and effort on the field, but he didn't have much follow-up. So you'll see a tale of two um, athletes. So if you had to pick right now, who do you think made the jump to college? No one has to answer in the chat, but you'll find out right now. It was actually Chris. Chris enjoyed four years of NCAA lacrosse, had a great time doing it, but uh, it's a great lesson that we can learn from here. So if we can go to the next slide. And as a coach, I like breaking down what works, what hasn't worked. So um, the 
takeaways from Chris and Max are, you know, never ending. But for you guys that are just starting this process or maybe you're in the middle of your high school career, the first and foremost thing is, is find your top 30 schools now. Um, the reason we say 30 is it's better to cast a wide net. You don't know if it's going to fit for be a good fit for you academically or athletically, but you you know there's oh, there's a lot of opportunities to play at the next level. You got to narrow that down, but you don't want to narrow it down so much that by the time you get to your senior year, you only have two one or two choices. So if you're a freshman or sophomore, you know setting that that number at 30 really gives you some opportunities to look at the different factors. So the things I look at, or as a college coach, I looked at was the academics. Uh, were they a good fit for the school? The athletic component, obviously, are they a D1, D2, or D3 athlete? Um, economics always plays a factor, and as, as uh, Gage had gone over, that number can change uh, greatly with different uh, scholarships, different academic um, uh, encouragement, and that sort of thing. And then the X factor. When I talk to my parents, um, the X factor, when you're visiting a campus or talking to a coach, is this a place that feels – right to you do you feel like you're a part of the right situation so don't ever neglect that gut feeling of what's going on um once you get on the uh platform and you have your uh connect lax profile going navigate to the college profile and click book the easiest best way to start building that 30 uh, list of schools um bookmarks to you and uh, bookmarks are private to you and your coaches so it's not like uh you click on those bookmarks it's going to make an announcement that you're liking or disliking a college so be aware of that chris do you mind if i chime in for a second please do do. one thing i would also keep in mind you know we do other webinars one is uh college admissions 101 and the key reason for example to have that list of 30 schools is because there are academic and athletic factors that you can't always control so for example uh there's turnover in the college coaching staffs. You may have a great connection with a college coach or a college coach that's an assistant coach that happens to be the offensive coordinator, maybe really high on your game and think it's a great fit. But if that coach goes and takes another opportunity or there's turnover, um, you know, that can turn off or kind of end that recruiting uh, interest, if you will, from that school. On the academic side, we talk, you know, about, you know, D1 schools and kind of a pre-read. Sometimes they can tell you, you know, hey, you've got the grades, you look like you're on pace, but at the end of the day, they can't speak for the admissions department. And then two weeks before you're about to sign your NLI, and we'll talk more about that in a separate presentation, your natural level 10, you know, you may not be able to fall through on a place that you verbally committed to. So again, verbally committing, you're only committing to that admissions process. Uh, in that process, you don't have 100% visibility into. So uh, again, super important to make sure that you're keeping an open mind and building a list of uh, 30 schools. We do have a question here. If we have a, if we are a freshman, we make it to top list of 30 now, how much contact should we be making with those coaches? So I don't want to skip ahead of Chris. I know he's going to get more into that. But if you've been invited to this webinar, then you should be building that list of 30 schools and also messaging all of those coaches. Now, your message as a 2024, for example, may not be, look at my video, look at my video, look at my video. It, it may be more introducing yourself to that college because, you know, why it fits you, the things we talked about earlier, the LinkedIn information, because college coaches often say players that reach out over a long period of time convey, you know, consistent and sincere interest that carries weight in their eyes. So we want to make sure that you're getting on their radar and sending that message uh, now. Thanks, Chris. One second, I'm going to go to your next slide. Absolutely. And to kind of piggyback on to Kaylee's question, um, when communicating with coaches, college coaches, if you've got two athletes and one's sending you messages every five to six months, or you've got a athlete that's, you know, emailing you, Hey, my grades are in or something significant happened. I'm playing in a tournament this weekend, you know, whatever is new and happening in your world, the coaches want to hear from you. So I would always err on the side of more communication, more contact, rather than less. I know it's kind of hard to make that first step, but if we can get any message from this uh, webinar is don't be shy, don't be afraid to make that reach. The college coaches, especially this day and age in COVID, um, are turning to YouTube and videos and reaching out to people on internet. So by all means, the more contact, anything that you've got updated. Now, if you're 
emailing every two weeks and something's, you know, nothing's really changed. I wouldn't necessarily bother them with that, but the more contact and the more updates you can give them about you, it shows them that you are interested in their school and you're interested in taking the next step. So I hope that answers your question. Back to the slides. Um, so a couple other factors we talked about academics and athletics, uh, you know, Gage is really absolutely you're welcome. Um, Gage did a great job on, on explaining how powerful our platform is. Um, on the other things, uh, on the economic side, one of the questions to ask is how do I stack up academically against other students? And this is a bit of a tricky question. Uh, the college process is, is a very good self-realization. And so um, if you are a, a very strong academic student and you're applying to an Ivy League school, it's much harder to get an academic scholarship. But if you are more of a big fish in a little pond, if you are academically strong and you uh, surpass the incoming freshman, uh, academically, you have a stronger position to ask college coaches for um, academic scholarships. It's a great way to kind of put the put it to the colleges and say, hey, I'm, I'm better than the average student here. What can you offer me as a package? Uh, again, that kind of puts you in the position. Am I in a position to ask for financial support? And uh, on the uh, on the other side of the slide, the X factor um, parents you would be surprised how much influence you have. I'm a parent myself and I know we turned a bit of white noise, but uh, you know, figuring out what your, your student athlete, your, your son or daughter is involved in really has an influence on what's gonna happen. Uh, if your son or daughter is a, at a small private school and they're looking at Ohio State or a large college at a division one level, are you worried about them being a small fish in a, in a large pond there? So you know, have to ask yourself, do you want a large or small school experience? Um, do you wanna be close to home? You know, a lot of people, um, love being less than four or five hour drive from home, or do you want to study on their side of the country? These are all questions that that X factor is important on deciding where you want to go to school. Uh, and do you want to study abroad? Does your does the college you, uh, you're applying to have a, a broad study? So this is just a quick, uh, schedule planner today tour your connect lax profile today. Make sure you guys are on it connected. Uh, everything's up to date and looking good. Uh, try to give you guys a little bit of a break here, but uh, by the end of uh, the holiday, well, on Christmas, the day after, bookmark 20 to 30 schools on your profile. You know, again, pick them based on academics, athletics, economics, X factor. Cast that wide net, and as things start working themselves out, that, that list of 30 will get dwindled down. Uh, create your highlight video by the first of the year. So January 3rd, um, get your highlight video. Um, this is more kind of towards parents draft, uh, draft your email and have a parent proofread it. Um, college coaches really want to hear from the athletes. They know the difference between a copy and pasted email and they know when a parent has written it. So let your son or daughter write that email proofread as best you can, but let it come from them and you'll be surprised what they can put together. And then by July, by January 17th, email all 30 programs on your top list. I mean, it's a pretty fast one month um calendar but we're just trying to encourage you guys to do the best you possibly can and, and make sure you uh don't have any regrets and you're doing everything you can once you get through that um february again review your top 30 list you've at this point you've already emailed everyone on your on your platform um you start placing colleges and gage can probably address this a little bit more but you can talk about great fit safety and the reach category so you know breaking that 30 into different realms like is it a safety school for you or is it something that you're kind of reaching for academically or athletically um, march uh, meet with your academic team tell people what you're trying to do tell your coach tell your academic advisor tell people that you want to play at the next level you'd be surprised how many advocates you have and then when it comes time to asking for recommendations uh, for college applications those people are a good resource uh, so if you tell people now what your intentions are uh, you would be surprised how many people are willing to help you and then April, May, upload your transcript and add any uh, clips to the highlight video that, that are updated and keep things rolling. And one quick thing, we often get a question on the transcript. Does this need to be the official transcript? The answer is no. You don't need to worry about uploading a official transcript into your profile. In the recruit info section of your profile, it's just uh, the unofficial transcript is perfectly fine. All right, got a little cut off, but goals for the summer of 2021. 
Um, on your list of 30, attending one to two camps on your college list bookmarks is a great way to get a sense of what that college campus is like. Typically, those camps, you stay in the dorms, you eat in the dining halls, you get to walk to and from the practice fields, you meet the coaches. Uh, if you can't make it to one or two camps, you know, there's a lot of colleges out there that are going online and doing virtual tours. Um, it's another great way. I went to Syracuse. Uh, I will preface this and say, do not look at the Syracuse virtual tour because it's filmed on the one sunny day a year. <laughs> it's not very uh, indicative of what Syracuse is like. It's pretty cloudy. Uh, come this summer, if you're a freshman going into sophomore year, start prepping for the ACT and ACT and SAT tests. And then when you're going into the next year, uh, start narrowing that list. Like we said, we started with 30, trying to refine it down to 25. Um, you know, start narrowing things down. You'll start seeing how people are responding to you. You might get coaches saying, we've already filled out our, our class for your year. Uh, you'll still start getting a feel for what you like and what you don't like. And, and teams that you have on your freshman year might not be the same on your senior year. So that list is always growing, always changing. So keep it, keep on top of it, keep checking back on it. And, and as teams come and go, it's okay. Don't, don't be too heartbroken. You're actually finding the best way for you to continue your college education. Um, this page comes from me being a Division I coach. So coaching the University of Denver, and I'd have players come play for me. These are the do's and don'ts. Absolutely do build your top 30 list. Can't stress that enough. Um, update profile with your transcript. Make sure that's, that's up to date. Uh, you know, have to go too much into that. Uh, highlight videos. Again, I think the sweet spot research has said three to three and a half minutes. We try and tell people to keep it under five minutes. Uh, draft your email to college coaches, let your parents see it. Uh, don't just copy and paste, you know, using our platform and seeing, Hey coach, I saw you guys were doing a Turkey day fundraiser or Hey, good luck at the tournament coming up, all that kind of stuff. Make those emails personal, personal, and then make them um, focused on the schools you're applying to. Don't just copy and paste everyone else. I know it's easy, but it really does stand out that you're not taking the effort to research the schools. Uh, be proactive in the process. The difference between Chris and Max, Max was probably a better lacrosse player. Chris was more proactive, and he was rewarded by playing in college. Uh, the don'ts. Again, Max Max's mistake was assuming college coaches were looking for him. He was a top player. He really focused on it. He didn't take the effort to make that connection with coaches. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to college coaches. They want to hear from you. So I know, Kaylee, you'd asked about how much – just send emails, let them know anything about you. Let Get on their radar, let them know who you are. Uh, in the subject line, uh, I recommend putting your name, your position, your graduation year, and what it's pertaining to. Uh, don't have too narrow of a list. If you start out as a freshman and you've got 10 on your list, by the time you're a senior, you're looking at one or two colleges, pretty narrow to, to apply for. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help, meaning don't be afraid to ask your club coaches, your high school guidance counselor, let everybody know your intentions. Uh, keep stressing that very well, and uh, don't let this narrow window pass you by. Um, as a high school coach and a college coach, you know, the hot years of, of really taking action and being proactive, I know you got a lot of stuff going on with high school. I know things are challenging now in the COVID world, but, you know, add this to your list. Get your profile going, get your bookmarks going, and we're here to, as a resource to help you guys go to the next level. So if those are your college dreams, we want to help you reach them. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. And I think what, what we're trying to do here is one kind of, uh, you know, we know we're a digital platform, but we want to kind of, you know, humanize it with a little bit of a roadmap here. You know, just try to lay something out. It's almost like a, a New Year's workout. You know, it's like, look, just do this 30-day roadmap. That's going to put you ahead of the curve of all the other players. If, if you look on our website, and I can switch back now uh, after I share the last three slides, but, you know, it's supply and demand. Uh, lacrosse is the fastest growing youth sport, and the number of college roster spots is just not growing nearly as fast. Lacrosse is not a gener gener I'm sorry, a revenue-generating sport. Um, so the key is that you just need to make sure that you're taking your games to the college coaches, and that's what we – you know, try to tell you in that first story about the, you know, those two players. Um, if I come here to the last three slides, you know, if you remember when we were on that college profile, you know, we have some 
breakdowns here, 25th to 70th percentile, uh, but also some distributions. That's what we're mapping uh, your information you get to come up with those match scores. Um, you should try to be above the minimums here of this band uh, as a student athlete. Again, it's student athletes, <laughs> student first. Uh, here we talked about that recommendations, take advantage of that. And then team culture matters, checking out those videos. Those are really good ways, in addition to um, the LinkedIn information, the virtual tours, to make that coach want to look at your highlight video and come see you in person. Because, you know, for them, they just want to focus their efforts on players that, that fit, that ultimately are going to go there. If they feel like they're just, you know, one of the blast message schools, you know, they're just not going to feel like you've kind of done the work. And they're just not going to be as apt to want to look at your profile and your highlight video because they don't know if you're, for example, interested in the majors that that school uh, offers. So that's just a really, you know, smart way and, and to, you know, separate yourself from the competition. And that's why we have you message through those college profiles, which is something requested by the college coaches that we work with in building the platform. Here we see. Um, some other things to reference the student life professors and how you can compare that. Uh, so I think that's really important as well. We have, as I mentioned, other presentations like college admissions at 101. So that's where we'll talk about more of these kind of factors, like that balance from, you know, are you looking for, you know, study abroad? We mentioned that earlier, but that shift, you know, D1, very athletics focused, kind of can feel like a full time job with school on top. Academics, right? You're actually going through the admission process with everybody else. And so, you know, the key is that's going to be, you know, a much more school driven experience at the college level. Um, so if you are, for example, interested in, you know, pre-med or, you know, you're going to have science labs on Friday, you know, not saying that to a college coach is a good thing at this point because that could be a flag for them. And they may not be, you know, as interested, especially, you know, at the D1 level, at the D3 level, probably le less of an issue. Um, so those are all the things, you know, to think about, think about. And, and that's why to circle back, building that target list is so important because it's going to get you thinking about those things. And that's going to translate to you having, you know, better outgoing messages to the college coaches and thus more traction. So uh, with that, we're just going to open it up to questions. I appreciate everyone taking the time. We do have a question uh, here from Brian. How do you gauge a college coach's interest? She's spoken to a couple of D3 schools after messaging, sending video. How can you tell if they are interested? That's a great question. I'm going to let a former D1 college coach answer that. You want to go ahead, Chris? Oh, hopefully we don't lose Chris. I apologize. That. So Chris, the question here, Chris, is just kind of how do you, can you tell – Obviously, the coaches, you know, they're going to keep their cards a little close to their chest. They're not going to necessarily say they're open because they don't know, you know, what's going on with all the players that they're recruiting. With that said, are there a couple tells, good ways to tell if a college coach is interested after communicating with them, sending video, et cetera? Absolutely. Uh, I've heard of it two ways. I've heard of applying for a job or um, well, actually just applying for a job. So a lot of coaches now are using email and, and prospect days to kind of just send out a black blanket email to everybody. Um, so not every coach is going to respond to every single email, but um, you know, reaching out to the coaches, sending them stuff and seeing if they're watching your videos, seeing if they, you know, uh, have interacted with what's going on. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, they're very busy now with emails and video watching and that sort of thing. So, um, are they interacting with you back and forth? Is there some give and take or is it like, yep, got your stuff. Thanks. Uh, I mean, it's a hard lesson to learn, but you know, some days you might have to just say, Hey coach, I'm really looking forward to playing or would like the opportunity to talk to you about playing for you. And if they're not responsive to it, it might be that you're not a good fit for them or they might have already kind of filled their class out. So um, I'd say engagement uh, on both sides are, is a good indicator of what's going on. So, you know, it's, it's hard because it does narrow from a high school level to the college level. Uh, fewer spots are available, but, you know, is, is your daughter getting some feedback? Or, you know, even just sending some innocuous, hey, coach, it was nice to meet you at the tournament. Any recommendations? 
and seeing opening that door for them would be a great way to see if they're interested in it. And, and, and I, one thing that I've heard is um, from talking to college coaches kind of from the opposite perspective is that, you know, sometimes as a parent, it, it, you might want to ask, I don't want to say like trigger questions, but questions that maybe tell if they've been thinking about your daughter um, playing at their school, such as like, do you think my daughter's style jives with your offensive system? Uh, do you think that she would be able to, uh, you know, be a contributor or see the field? You know, those are questions that are kind of, I want to say putting them on a spot a little bit. Does that make sense to say like, look, you've seen the video, like kind of what do you think? Right. And, and maybe, you know, if they say no, then that's actually better to have that feedback than no feedback, because obviously you'll be able to focus you know, and, and refine your, your effort. So um, obviously it's like, you know, many things where, you know, they're not trying to tip all their cards because, you know, they have the opposite problem, which is they're trying to gauge how interested the players are in their school. You know, is this player sending this email to every other school in the conference? Right. So I think the key, you know, and when you think about recruiting in general, it's, it's really relationships. Um, and so building the relationship with the college coach by trying to reach out and have that candid conversation, um, I think will definitely, uh, you know, benefit in building that positive relationship. The other thing I'll just say is, you know, if you do get an email from a school that you're not interested in, always reply to that school. L lacrosse college coaches, like a sorority and a fraternity, they all speak with each other. And so you just want to make sure that you're keeping, uh, you know, that door door open. Good question. Any other questions? Thank you, Brian. Question here. Our 2023 daughters right out and they said that they are not allowed to speak with her until January 1st. You mentioned she would have the interactions. Yeah, so great question. Because of compliance, and this is what Chris was kind of speaking to earlier, they, they're not they may not be able to respond to her period depending on that college's uh, grad uh, division. So that's something that we show when you're composing your message to the coaches. So especially as a 2023, you know, you're not necessarily, you know, you're not necessarily trying to have too much of that. And the other thing is they're probably having a conversation with your club directors about you anyway, because it's just more, they want to get that kind of direct assessment from them than uh, necessarily speak to all the 23 parents at this point, if that kind of makes sense. So I would not worry about a coach responding, uh, saying that, and that January 1st is, is now the, the April 15th, and that's a dead period. So when you go on your dashboard, you'll see uh, you know that information there. So that's more um, compliance. So I would not worry about uh, that per se. Um, and then here, how can sports social media accounts elevate our chances of being seen, for example, across Instagram crowds? So that's a great question here. Uh, more and more players, and I didn't touch on that earlier, and I'm gonna switch now to sharing uh, my screen, uh, are showing their social on, so first off, just to finish uh, Ashley's question, you know, we do have some kind of compliance things, and obviously that's getting pushed around. And Brian, you're right. Uh, so D3, yes, they can talk to players at any time. So I want to try to route out this question here. So you'll see that broken out here. Okay, so this is the, the dead period. That has to do with in-person. You can communicate with coaches at any time, but everything with COVID is kind of pushing back the recruiting calendar a little bit as well. So that's another point there, uh, Ashley. With that said, what I wanted to, to hit on um, was social real quick. You can embed your social on your profile that's a diligence item, if you will, for college coaches. Um, so if you want to put that on there and show that on your profile publicly, um, we see a lot of, of players doing that. Um, and it's just going to help kind of accelerate their recruitment of you, kind of checking that box. Um, so, for example, if I come here, I'm just trying to think if I remember this is a player that was showing their social. Yep. So, you know, she's putting that in there. I don't think she has a, yacht, a lot yet, but uh, players often, you know, get that information in there.
Any other questions? And then just to close out Kaylee's, you know, when you do build that highlight video, we'll also tag you as the player uh, in that as well. Okay. And that goes on to different media outlets, uh, media outlets as well. So, uh, you know, coaches are looking for your game everywhere. So we try to make that as easy as possible for them to find. Uh, here's the response in, in regards to, to Brian. And we got Samantha chiming in as well. So there we go. Um, I appreciate that. Any other questions? that uh people have uh, before we wrap it up there will be recording of this webinar uh made available as well great highlight um here kaylee you want to uh just start here everything looks good um I'm, and if that hasn't made its way onto the social that will make its way soon there's just so many highlight videos being built there's a delay in getting it up on the social media uh with that, any other questions? There is a recording of this webinar that's going to be made available as well. Appreciate everyone taking the time. You'll be able to see uh, and access the slides as well as the recording uh, from your dashboard. So uh, I wish everyone a safe uh, holiday with their families. And you know, hopefully uh, next summer will be a little bit easier uh, than this past one. Uh, if you have any questions, never hit to hesitate to reach out. Uh, shoot us an email, support at Connect Lax, or give us a call. And we wish everyone... Uh, well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Gage, for having me. Yes, of course. Thank you, Kaylee. Great to hear. Appreciate it, everyone. We wish you guys the best.